Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend, and today we're going to talk about growing past murmuring. As the old adage goes, you can't always get what you want. We are all familiar with the full-blown temper tantrum that embarrass parents at supermarkets. Usually such tantrums involve kicking and screaming and yelling at the person who won't give them what they want. I hate you. I don't like you. You are mean. A wise parent, however, does not cave into those temper tantrums and does not give that child what they want, even if it's something that they wanted to give that child, until that child learns to respect and know. This knowledge will serve that child well when they need to learn to negotiate through life. God doesn't discourage us from expressing our disappointment, our displeasure, when our prayers are not answered in the way that we had hoped or as quickly as we had hoped. He doesn't mind us asking questions. In fact, he encourages us to dialogue with him. Come, let us reason together. Isaiah 1 verse 18. And if you're still wondering if God's just going to hit you hard if you dare say that you don't understand something, a casual read of Psalms will quickly erase that one. The Psalms are full of Psalms that talk about displeasure, confusion, pain, disappointment, and wondering if God has abandoned somebody. Moses was not the least bit shy about letting God know just how he felt about some of God's plans. And even Elijah the prophet in 1 Kings 19, Elijah grossly overstated his plight as he complained to God, I am the only one left. God didn't rebuke his prophet for his self-pity and gross exaggeration. But instead, he responded by recalibrating his prophet's spirit so Elijah could once again recognize God's voice. The disciples are prime examples. They often asked questions of Jesus, and Jesus answered them. But many times, Jesus' answers to their questions revealed their immaturity and their sinful hearts. Yep. Jesus answered their questions all right. Discrediting God's character is an entirely different kettle of fish, though. When I read the confrontations between Jesus and the religious leaders of his day, for example, I hear a distinct lack of respect and disdain in their tone. They weren't there to ask questions of Jesus. They were there to question Jesus. They wanted to play prosecutor in God's judicial court, but God sits on the throne, and he doesn't sit in the prisoner's docket. After all, he has nothing to prove. And then there are the Israelites wandering around in the desert. They chose to deliberately step away from his presence and rather than humbly approach God with their concerns, they complained to Moses and Aaron about God's failure to give them what they wanted. They were as children having a temper tantrum and they gave their heavenly father a cold shoulder by refusing to engage with him. Here are some questions to ask of yourself. Do you murmur against God rather than talk to God when you're feeling disappointed? Do you take your complaints to everyone else but God when you feel grieved by his decision? Do you assume that the motivations and intentions of his heart are evil towards you just because you didn't get what you want when you wanted it. Do you step away from your heavenly father? Do you withdraw your affection from him? 
Do you step away from his heart or towards his heart? Moses was not afraid to be transparent and raw in his conversations with God. He laid it all out before Yahweh on several occasions, but he always remembered that he was treading on holy ground. I have no doubt that when he was entering that meeting place with the Lord, his shoes stayed behind outside of that tent. As a result, God counted him as friend, Exodus 33, 11, and God showed him his ways, Psalm 103, verse 7. Dare to be like Moses and dare to call him friend, but never dare to presume that outside of the blood of Jesus Christ that you would have access into the Holy of Holies. Don't be afraid to ask God the hard questions and let him know how your heart really feels, but never forget that you are talking to the King of Kings, the creator of the universe, and the one who formed you 